I have um, just uncovered an, a, a wee trick um, through, a, it was through a forum. Um, I've been, well, the weather's getting a bit uh, warmer, which is nice. So uh, the general range on the Renault Zoe has been going up, uh, which is great. And you, if you've seen my previous video, uh, you'll know that uh, uh, we got about 100 miles out of the, out of the car and across country run visiting different uh, castles. So I was uh, investigating, uh, uh, or well, just on one of the, the forums of Renault uh, drivers, and found that there's a wee trick you can do, which kind of uh, resets the range meter uh, estimator, um, so that it's kind of to its factory. I'm not sure if it's its factory default on what the capacity of the the battery is, because it tends over time to get ever more conservative in in what it's telling you which is good it means you're never gonna uh, run out of charge so I did this the other day and I uh, fully charged it up 100% uh, opened the door put both feet on the pedals the brake and accelerator pushed down and then hit one of the trip meter uh, buttons on the the wiper stalk and held that down and then as if by magic the battery meter and the range uh, flashed from, I think it was about 85 miles, it was saying, uh, up to 123 miles, just like that. So, um, I've got some, uh, some folks uh, nattering away right in, front, right in front of the car here, having a good old natter they are. And uh, anyway, uh, so I've driven a few miles, uh, 3.4 miles or so, and you can see there, 118 miles, which is great. Uh, so, we'll, um, yeah, I'm intrigued by this to see what, if that's real or, you know, the, the back, it, it actually is, there's more range available until the warning lights come on because it's kind of recalibrated. Uh, so I've got to run. I'm going out to um, Haddo House, which we went to us in the previous video i'm uh, conducting a wedding there on saturday so we've got the wedding rehearsal so um, a round trip of about 45 50 miles and uh so we'll get an idea of uh, whether this is kind of legitimate or it's just numbers on the screen i'm intrigued i have to say anyway it's a beautiful evening and I better get going because uh, time is pressing. I've got 55 minutes, 7 o'clock, I'm supposed to be there. And it is 5 past 6. All right, signing off. Turning on. And then signing off. Well, I am I'm stuck in traffic. I thought I would try and do the clever thing. Ha, ha, ha and miss out kind of middle of the city and go along the beach which is uh, right out there and uh, of course it's still it's the wrong time to be leaving uh, this time of day <laughs> so I'm stuck in traffic anyway I uh, have done a few more miles and uh, still have 113 on the the range gauge at the moment uh, so that's okay of course i'm not using an awful lot of electricity when i'm just cruising along like this however you you do still use a bit more than if you're nice constant speed uh, but uh, there we are and um i read an interesting article since i'm sitting here anyway um on the uh on the web today uh i think there's been a few articles uh about specifically about renault and nissan and and electric cars just the kind of general market for electric cars at the moment which is very interesting and um it's something that i've suspected for quite some time in particular with with renault 
and it'll be interesting to see how Volkswagen do but at the moment electric cars they haven't broken into the mass market uh, yet and because of that the folks that tend to be buying them I think are folks that are interested in technology um, and, and maybe they maybe have a bit more money to uh, this is a kind of general rule uh, to, to sort of throw at new technology and um, so where you see this in particular is that the, the higher end electric cars are selling pretty well the Tesla Model S as an example uh, now that's I had a bit of fun the other day and I thought well if I was going to get one and I'd spec it up nicely and it came to £85,000 uh, so, so anyway a dream on there uh, and of course it's a huge it's a huge very heavy car uh, as well very fast lots of battery life but uh, it's very heavy and big uh, as a result nice car don't get me wrong um, but very expensive and uh, and no wonder you're, you're paying an awful lot for the technology and, and specifically for the battery that's inside it and the battery is four times the size of the one that's uh, that's in here mm -hmm. thereabouts um, and I do wonder if Renault in being a mass market producer of cars uh, it's almost as if this the, the Zoe which is a lovely little car is just too early um, for the mass market uh, and now Renault have done a good job in trying to keep the price down I mean it's a very competitive price for an electric car but it is a lot more than buying the equivalent petrol or diesel Clio, say, which is a similar size uh, to this. In fact, this is on built on the same platform. Um, so, I do wonder uh, if that is part of the reason why Renault are struggling a bit more to sell their cars than the likes of Tesla. Even, even Nissan with the Leaf, which is quite a bit more expensive, uh, or BMW with the new i3 that they've just brought out, which seems to be selling pretty well, even though it's a, a very odd looking thing. I had a look at one the other day, going around a showroom with a friend, and it is a strange looking thing. So, yeah, I, I, I'm intrigued. And, uh, and I think, I, I did read somewhere that one of the folks in Renault was saying something similar that they are wondering if they're kind of revising their estimates because the market hasn't developed as fast as they thought it might fast as in folks that in a kind of with a budget more like the budget that that I have for a car uh, see the benefits of an electric car and that and that's not quite there yet I have been letting folks drive this car uh, as much as possible and, and uh, just a couple of folks in the last week uh, and uh, they were both very impressed and uh, stunned really by how nice it was to drive, uh, that it's peppy around town, uh, very quiet and smooth. So and I think that is, it's just going to take folks experiencing it to know uh, what a pleasure it is to drive an electric car uh, in comparison to your your grumbly diesel uh, or thirsty petrol. Uh, anyway, some musings on Renault's and the market, what it's doing at the moment. Uh, it's, yeah, I'm intrigued, as I say, uh, to find out what's going on. Just coming up to Haddo, and um, the uh, I, I'm just about going to be here in time, thankfully, <laughs> despite all those delays. Um, 23 miles I've done. I've got 83 miles on the the range thing. So this range thing is coming down, um, which is kind of what I thought it would do. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, what a whole what the whole charge is gonna end up being. 
uh, on this. Anyway, a very pleasant drive through the country and uh, we will get on with this wedding rehearsal in the chapel at Haddo House. I'm quite looking forward to being a long time since I've been in uh, in this chapel. Uh, optimistic starting point uh, whereas um, previously it's just starting from how I've been driving uh, previously and so sometimes it's a bit pessimistic on the range that you you can get from the uh, from the car um, so but that's fine I mean you know that's, that's okay uh, everything's behaving itself as it as it should There are some ominous clouds ahead, and uh, I might just go pop down to the. There's a finally we have a proper rapid charger in Aberdeen, uh, so I am uh, going a little bit faster, not on a range mode uh, here, and uh, maybe do a little bit of a charge up at the new Siemens rapid charger at Garth D which is a proper rapid charger. So some of my previous videos have been lamenting the slow rate of the so-called rapid chargers, APT rapid chargers around, uh, but this new one actually is the real McCoy. Uh, so uh, we'll head that way. But I did get a bit of a chance uh, to uh, one of the, all the previous videos I've been doing have really been about um, economy and and driving kind of sedately and in an economical frame of mind uh, and haven't really reflected some of the more fun parts of EV driving, which is that. Uh, the, the car the car is a lot of fun to drive around uh, around town or I mean it's fine on the motor in the motorway of course you're, you, you tend to be just cruising along at certain, certain speeds so that's not an issue if you are wanting to cruise at 100 miles an hour uh, it is not the car for you uh, limited as it is to 85 uh, but for cruising between 60 70 it's absolutely fine and uh, oh, we're just going past the airport. So there's a plane going overhead.
we're going up quite a steep hill here and uh, uh, there's somebody right uh, in front generally cruising up. Um, Generally, it's, it's okay. The tyres don't have a huge amount of grip. As, as far as handling goes, it is a typical uh, front-wheel drive hatch. It will understeer. Um, the ride is quite firm. I think part of that is a small car, quite heavy. Uh, the spring springs have to be fairly substantial to cope with the weight of the battery. Um, this car is a good 300 kilos more than... Um, car in front no doubt would be the Clio in front uh, so you do pay for that little with the ride it's okay it's okay it's fine um, and the and the handling is it's it's fine for a, for a small car I guess if you're used to a, a little petrol engine um, it would feel a bit uh, a bit he a bit heavy and slower to change direction I would assume I was used to something much bigger so it feels very nippy to me it's all relative. So one of the things I noticed about the performance is that uh, because it's it, uh, there's a slight more engine whine, uh, motor whine when you're in full uh, full throttle, uh, but it's not uh, it's not much. It's pre pretty. Uh, it, 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 it's it's just not very. Um, what's the word to say, flamboyant, I guess, and that there's not an awful lot of noise and aggro goes on. And uh, so I think quite often if folks are in the car, they don't quite realise uh, that you're, you're pushing on, apart from the, the feeling of the, of the Gs as you're accelerating. And that acceleration is, is pretty good, up to sort of 40 miles an hour or so. Um, it just thereafter it, it lags off and there there yeah it would be nice to have a bit more poke in the engine but it's absolutely fine for the, the uses that I have for a car like this I'm mostly on my own in the car there's not an awful lot of weight that extra weight I'm carrying or anything like that so uh, I must admit I haven't really noticed the fact I've dropped 140 odd horsepower from the car I had previously um, the only thing is on the motorway where you just don't have the same pickup at high speed uh, that you had before, understandably. But low down torque and getting away from the lights is actually it's quicker um, because its initial takeoff is, is just instant, uh, which is actually a lot of, it's a lot of fun 
uh, once you get used to it. Um, So here I am at the light, turning green, floor the throttle, and we're already at 40 miles an hour, just like that. Um, so away from the away from the lights, it is it's great, and uh, and you can leave other cars in the, a little hmm, a little surprised by how quickly you've picked up, and uh, yeah, they will they will catch up. Once you get to uh, you know sixty odd miles an hour, because it uh, is uh, showing its limitations there. But of course, this car is mostly designed for pootering in the in the town like this, and it is, uh, I guess, perfectly geared for that, uh, for doing that. They, and they could, I guess, lower the gearing to accelerate quicker, uh, or give it slightly more power. Uh, then of course you're using more juice, so it's all, it's all a comp everything's a compromise uh, in life, and EVs are no different. Well, it looks like we would have been heading to about 100 miles or so. Of course, I was going a lot faster this last sort of 15 miles, and uh, we have. Uh, on the, the mark we've done about 60 miles and about 40 miles left on the range so here in Asda uh, Garth D look at this lovely woo brand new Siemens charger it the lines are not here yet so um, they are still coning it off so no one just parks there I think they're putting lines in next week but we can use it, we just need to move the cones. So, just turning off, I uh, get my card. Uh, I'm just still on charge your car here with this. Uh, press the button to release the, the bonnet, uh, the charging flap. Now this is a paragon of simplicity in comparison to some of these. Uh, choose your energy. You have the new CCS, the BMW i3 and some VWs use, Chadamo. And what I'm gonna use, the AC. Plug the cable and press start. It is talking and that's it starting to charge boom boom just like that dead simple and you're at 39 percent and it's going to take about 40 minutes to charge all the way up which is about what I'd expect. So if um, I would expect it, if it was a bit, uh, if it was lower, I think it'd be, if it was absolutely flat, it would be about 50, uh, 50 minutes, something like that. It's funny when it's a f charged up more, it's, you know, the kind of overall rate is even slower anyway, but it is clicking up and it clicks up about a percentage every 20 seconds. So it is running at the full whack and if I shut up, you can hear the fans uh, kicking in to keep everything cool as it's charging. Awesome. So glad this machine is here now. We finally have a proper rapid in Aberdeen. Brilliant. <laughs> Never need to use that again. So in the time it's taken me to pop over the road to Sainsbury's, 
and buy a little bit of uh, a few bits and bobs. Uh, we'll see what it's up to. Uh, of course, no need to use the uh, the cable uh, because it's already attached. Oops. And 95%. Oops. Uh, with an estimated 10 minutes to go or so. It will be longer than that, I suspect. Uh, but I'll maybe let it add another couple of percent or so uh, here um, before heading home. Uh, but that is very convenient. So certainly in the time it would take you to uh, stop and have a do a shop or something like that, it, even if it was empty, it would be fully charged. And this one is just off the main uh, the main road uh, heading north so it's a good location for people that are wanting to uh, get a stop uh, before they head up uh, either head up north or, or head further south um, certainly in the Zoe it'd be no problems getting all the way to Dundee or further as I found getting all the way to Kinross uh, the other day um, about 95 miles that is um, in one charge from Aberdeen which is great so uh yeah it's uh it's a good location and very good to see a proper rapid charger here in aberdeen so it's at 99 percent charge so i'm just going to stop now uh but this uh this tells you on the screen if the camera will uh work it out in the very dark here so it shows you how long you've been how much energy has gone into into the car uh, which is all very neat. It's very this this machine is nicely styled. What's on the screen is very clear, uh, unlike some of them, which are very complicated or very hard to see your way round. Uh, there you go, done. At the car, um, you can see uh, the uh, range. It's uh, 106 miles. So uh, when I did this before, it was 123. Uh, so of course we weren't at 100%, uh, but it has come down a bit from uh, from that. However, no bad. Uh, certainly, ah, oh, it removes a lot of anxiety. That's for sure. Uh, all good. Righto, signing off.